My fiancé female 31 and I male 33 got engaged in October last year and have been in a relationship for 5 years now. Everything has been great and I can honestly say that I've never met anyone who comes close to her. She's been the love of my life for sure. I've known her most of my life. We grew up on the same street just round the corner from each other. Her mom and dad still stay in the same house and I still stay in the same house I grew up in which my mom left to me when she passed away in 2014. We still don't officially live together yet but for all intents and purposes she lives here. Her parents and her are really close though and she still has her bedroom there and will occasionally spend the night there but she's never away from here. Anyway this morning I decided to go take a walk down to the shops to buy some things and as I was about halfway down 15 minute walk I realized I had forgotten my face mask masks are mandatory here in shops since 10th of July. So I had to walk back and get mine. When I walked in the door to grab the mask from the kitchen table I heard her speaking to someone loudly on the phone in the living room and she said yeah but David will always be the love of my life. David is her ex-boyfriend. I don't know a great deal about him but I know they were in a relationship for two years and it ended a year before we started dating. He also dumped her. I just grabbed my mask and walked back out and just as I got to the shops I felt weird and I had to sit down as my mind was going in a thousand different directions. I eventually got back home and immediately told her I feel sick and sent her back round to her parents' house as I didn't want her about as I was ill. I'm now lying in my bed wondering what to do to be honest. I know she didn't do anything wrong. It's not like she cheated on me or intentionally went out of her way to hurt me but what's heard can't be unheard. She basically said that the person who she's agreed to marry isn't a patch on an ex she's not been with for six years. The fact she said he will always be the love of her life also means that it's a void game. Her heart's already been taken and there's nothing I could ever do to change that. Also what would happen if he did come back into her life? You can't turn down the love of your life when they come calling and I'd be dumped quicker than yesterday's leftovers. So what do I do? Tell her I was earwigging on her and heard her say that shit. Just end the relationship for a completely vague reason like oh it's not you it's me etc. Swallow my pride and pretend I didn't hear it. Everything has been wonderful but there's no way on this earth I want to be someone's second choice especially when her ex is the one on her mind that she obviously would be with if she could. I'm thinking about just saying it's not working between us. She's now texting me about coming round tonight and mothering and spoiling me cause I'm the sickie. Fuck that. I was gonna update sooner, but I've spent the last three and a half days in a drunken stupor so my apologies but I'll warn you. This is not a good update. Right so after posting and receiving some advice on Reddit on Thursday I was thinking of telling her to come back round on Thursday night so we could talk but settled on Friday morning instead as I wanted to get my head in a clearer state. She still thought I was ill so I needed a bit of time to think through what I was going to say. So she comes round on Friday morning about 8am with rolls and tuna mayo crunch her mum had made for me along with grapes, sweets and juice and stuff. I think she could see right away that something was wrong as I must have looked stony-faced and you could cut the atmosphere with a knife. Anyways I said to her that I wasn't really sick and that yesterday as I was going to the shops I forgot my mask, had to come back to retrieve it, and when I got in to get it I heard her talking in the other room, about David. Her face went completely pale, and she started welling up so I instinctively stopped talking and just stared at her. She then runs into the toilet locks the door and starts hysterically crying and alarm bells are going off all over the place in my head. Her reaction made me think she didn't know what I heard so she must have said some other shit about him as well. I chapped on the door and told her if she has any aspirations of saving this relationship she had better tell me everything right now. 30 minutes or so go by and she finally comes out dabbing her face with a tissue and tells me David got back in touch with her four or five months ago and she had been sleeping with him once or twice a week since. I said on my previous post she will occasionally go and stay with her parents. It's usually about once a week. Sometimes twice. Sometimes none. The thing is I've just popped round myself dozens of times over the years to speak to her mum or dad. Watch TV or anything at all really without informing her. And she's always been there so it's just become routine and I've never thought any more of it. This has obviously been the times that she's gone to meet David. All I can think of is that the snippet of conversation I heard her having was her friend or something helping her choose between David and I. When I heard this I hit the roof. I threw her out grabbed handfuls of her stuff, put it in bin bags and threw it out the door into the front garden. She's still standing there btw. I then grabbed my garden hose and drenched the shit out of the bags with it. She at this point has ran round to her house and about a minute later her dad comes rampaging round screaming. Her dad and I end up rolling about the now quagmire-ish front garden fighting, 
at about 9 a.m. in the morning no less. Police vans and everything ended up turning up and half the street was out because of the Rami. Afterwards I blocked her on everything and went to my friend's house where three of us spent the weekend and Monday they took off work. I'm on furlough drinking. When I got back in the house this morning I noticed she had been back in the house at some point dot 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 made the beds, done the washing and iron. I have no idea why she done this. As I'm writing this she's tried to get in again. I haven't been able to change the locks yet so I put the door chains on the front and back door and from upstairs heard the door open and the chains clanging as she tried to get in. There's also a note that she's put through the door. I don't even want to read it right now. I'm too hurt, hungry and hungover to even think about what she has to say. Update 2. Sorry for the belated but I'm in a bad way right now. I'm half drunk as I write this so bear with me. Since everything that has happened things have took a turn for the worse. As many of you mentioned I should do, I sent an email to her father, explaining my side of the story and apologizing for taking things public and embarrassing his daughter but as I said previously, I acted instinctively. I didn't apologize for fighting him as I was reacting to him coming at me. He basically told me to fuck off and accused me of biting his ear for some reason. So that's what was stuck in my teeth. I joke off course dot if you don't laugh, you'll cry. About a week ago I went outside to find my car keyed right down from the passenger side wing mirror round to the boot. Last Sunday I was walking down the road to meet a friend at the arches a place where we occasionally hang out and walk from an arched bridge and as I was turning the corner the local mouth gossip called me a disgrace. I said how am I disgrace and she told me that I'm a disgrace for beating up my ex fiance Let's just be clear here. I've never laid a finger on her in my life. Either her, her father or someone else is perpetuating this lie and me throwing her shit out and hosing it has obviously given this an authenticity. I haven't spoken to my ex and she hasn't tried to contact me anymore. I think they're all on the same page now. That I'm the bad guy. I've got the ball rolling and putting my house up for sale. I can't live here anymore. I wish I still had my mum to lean on. She would make things better. Sorry for the shit update. Final update. Firstly, I want to thank everyone who has reached out. I've tried to reply to everyone and hopefully this update will help. I am since still in my house but I will be renting it out rather than selling. I can't in good conscience give up something that was in my mom's and has been in the family for generations. I have since spoke to the father and I understand that the family circled the wagons, but to throw me under the bus so brutally dot was genuinely ridiculous. Collateral damage to me and my name is alright apparently. All in all I feel like I was in a shit shower that changed course. Still struggling but feeling a lot better now that I've got my umbrella. Jamie, is a sway even a word? Story 2. My original post is here. I have no idea where to start with the events that have occurred within the past 11 hours since I last posted. I am still shaken up and this is hard to process. My BF finally messaged me back a few hours after I asked him to meet up with me. He agreed to meet me at his apartment. I made sure that I was going to talk to his dad before him so he could help me find the correct course of action for my BF. Well I met with the father we will call him X I was so scared before talking to X that I was shaking. My voice was unsteady and I had tears in my eyes when I walked in. I had no idea where to begin. X looked concerned so he sat us down across from each other. I told X that I believe his son has been sexually abused for six years now. Of course, X was taken aback. I started to tell him about what my BF told me. That's when X started to be more and more puzzled. He stopped me while telling the story I knew about my BF and his mother. X told me that there's no way this is completely true. When he says this I start getting confused as well. X tells me that my BFS mother died in a car accident when he was 8. X never remarried or had a GF. At this point I am dumbfounded and I have no idea what to say. X tells me that he didn't think my BFS mother was sexually abusive while she was alive or why my BF would even tell me this. X also tells me that he have no idea who mom might be on his phone. I take a few minutes to calm down and think before I head over to my BF's apartment. The drive was only 10-ish minutes from X's house to my BF's. I took this time to process what X told me and what I would say to my BF. When I got to the apartment I promptly went inside. I demanded answers immediately. I asked the truth about his mother, the messages I saw, and if they've really been having sex since he was 13. Of course he apologized again and gave me the same story, but it made me angry. This is where I lost my cool. I yelled and told him that X told me that his biological mother had been dead for almost 11 years. I told him I knew there was no way the story he told me was true because his mother passed when he was 8 years old. My BF became silent and looked down. At this point I was crying uncontrollably. I felt so bad for what happened and I wanted to get him therapy. I was willing to forgive him for keeping the secret from me. My BF was silent for a few minutes then finally spoke to me. 
He told me he made the whole story up. The contact he had his mom was an ex-girlfriend he regularly hooked up with. She was 20 and a bartender in our city. He put her name as mom so I wouldn't get suspicious that he was talking to another woman so often. He didn't think I would find out so he fabricated the whole story up. This way, I wouldn't be mad at him. He told me he figured I would feel sorry for him and stay with him. I felt so betrayed when he confessed this. In past few days I went from having a healthy relationship to thinking my BF had been sexually abused by his mother then to find out it was all a lie just because he didn't want me to know he was sleeping with this ex. He tried to justify it further, telling me it was meaningless and he only loved me. I told my BF that I want nothing to do with him and left. He tried to follow and plead with me but I ignored him. I drove home, threw out all everything he gave me, and blocked him once again. I cannot believe he lied about something so major just to protect himself. I haven't stopped crying since I left his apartment. I'm so hurt and now I don't know what to do. I no longer want him in my life. I'm considering moving town so he can't find me. He has gotten online and used a fake number to try and get a hold of me to apologize. I need to clear my head and try to take everything in. I will turn off my phone and computer for a while so he can't try to contact me again. Update, so my now XBF came to my apartment and started banging on the door begging to be let in so we could talk. At this point I have turned all the lights off. I am being quiet so he will hopefully leave. I know he can see my car out front so it's obvious that I am here still. I want to call the cops but I am not sure there's much they can do. I'm thinking about going back to live with my parents until this blows over with him. I am also considering talking to his ex that he was hooking up with. I got her full name and where she works. I will keep updates as I learn more about my ex-BF. Update 2 I'm having a lot of people send me messages so thank you for the kind words. I can't reply to everyone's messages so at the bottom of the comments I added some additional commentary on everyone's suspicions. Please read it to answer any questions if you're still unsure. Please note that there are some personal details I left out in order to keep privacy. X. How his mother died there's a reason he didn't talk about it. For those who have questions, I made a comment on this post to help clarify some details and give a final update.